So that's why the verification criterion is wrong? That's why. Is that why logical positivism died out? That's a complicated story. It did die out, and very quickly. At one point it was all the rage in philosophy. Just a few decades later, just about everyone in philosophy knew it was wrong. Just because of that one problem? I think that was part of it. Bertrand Russell ends his article on logical positivism by mentioning that this is the reason he's now convinced it's wrong. Wow. That's a big deal. It is. Anything else? You might want to ask a better historian of analytic philosophy. But I do have a few pointers. Let's hear them. Quine, Wittgenstein, Popper, and Kuhn. Wait. I thought Wittgenstein had something to do with logical positivism. You're thinking of early Wittgenstein. In his later writings his philosophy of language starts to be a problem for logical positivism. Similar with Quine. In the two dogmas of empiricism. You mean that article I couldn't understand? Yeah. That one. Don't worry. Everyone has that problem. Okay. But that article helped to kill logical atomism. Wait. Logical? Atomism? What's that? A topic for another time. Let's just say it's an idea in philosophy of language and it was part of logical positivism. Okay. And Quine rejected logical atomism in the two dogmas. Is that why the two dogmas was so important? Well, that's part of why. It's actually very similar to what Wittgenstein's later philosophy of language does that's also bad for logical positivism. Okay, what about those other guys? You mentioned Karl Popper, right? The falsifiability guy. Yup. He gives the famous falsifiability answer to the question of what makes a theory scientific. What's that got to do with logical positivism? More than you'd think. So we were talking about the problem of how we can learn anything from experience without relying on a principle we did not learn from experience. Right. And sometimes they call that the problem of induction. Right. Well, Popper doesn't think the problem of induction can be solved. And that's a big problem for logical positivism? Yup. It means science can't verify anything. Okay, I think I get it. But there's another way of looking at it. Shoot. Popper thinks the essential aspect of science is falsifiability. But the positivists think it's verifiability. Those aren't the same things? Not quite. Verification is finding evidence consistent with the theory. Falsification is finding evidence not consistent with it. Think of white swans a long time ago. Okay, so the theory that all swans are white looked like it was verified for a while. Yes. But then it was falsified. Yeah. It's also a logic thing. Verification often involves an inductive inference from some observed things to a universal claim about all things. Like what they used to think. We've seen a lot of white swans and never any other kind. So all swans are white. Just like that. Okay. But falsification is a deductive inference. Like we found a black swan in New Zealand or wherever, so it's not true that all swans are white? Precisely. You mean it's just TSO stuff from logic class? Yes! And since science does that deduction thing, the logical positivists are wrong about science. Because they only recognized verification. Well, I think so. But the real point is that Popper thinks so, and that he thinks they're also wrong, because science doesn't even need verifiability, and he thinks verifiability can't be done at all. Okay, and that helped kill logical positivism? Yeah, I think so. Alright. Now what about Kuhn?